the London theatre critic, he turned a little-known French musical into a global blockbuster, earning $20 million in royalties. Herbert Kretzmer on stage at an anniversary performance of Les Miserables in London in 2010. The show, for which he wrote the English lyrics, opened in London in 1985 and ran continuously until this year. Herbert Kretzmer, a London theatre critic who wrote the English lyrics to an all-but-forgotten French musical called Les Miserables in 1985, giving new life to what has become one of the world's most successful theatre productions, died on Wednesday at his home in London. He was 95. Mark Berlin, Mr. Kretzmer's agent, confirmed the death. A South African journalist who sold his accordion to buy passage to Europe, Mr. Kretzmer, failed as a novelist in Paris, playing piano in a brasserie for meals. A thief stole all of his money on his first day in London. He wrote features and columns for London newspapers and became a theatre critic for the Daily Express for 16 years and then a television critic for the Daily Mail for eight more. But he loved music and starting in 1960, while still writing for newspapers, he began developing a second career as a lyricist and songwriter. He wrote music for the BBC's satirical television show That Was The Week That Was and collaborated with the French singer Charles Aznavour on about 30 songs, including the international hits She and Yesterday, When I Was Young. The British producer Cameron McIntosh took notice and asked Mr. Kretzmer to reimagine an obscure musical that had opened and closed after a few months in Paris in 1980, five years earlier. It was not an alluring prospect. France had no tradition of musical theatre, and Les Miserables was based on Victor Hugo's epic tale of 19th-century student uprisings, with teeming streets, brothels, sewers and a vast panorama of episodes and characters who love, fight and die at the barricades. And it was all sung, in French. Mr. Kretzmer's task was not to literally translate the original libretto by Elaine Bublil and Jean-Marc Nadel. That might have been impossible. Songs, like poems, with their subtle nuances, references and allusions, are notoriously resistant to translation. And Mr. Kretzmer's French was spotty anyway. What he tried to do instead was to capture, in English, the spirit of Hugo's tale of revolution, the songs of angry men and women yearning for freedom. Words have resonance within a culture, they have submarine strengths and meaning Mr. Kretzmer told The New Yorker in 2013. Translation the very word I rebut and resent, because it minimizes the genuine creativity that I bring to the task. The show I inherited from Paris ran for just two hours he added. The show I wrote in English ran for just over three hours. You don't need to be a math whiz to calculate that at least a third of the play did not exist before I got my hands on it. With the Kretzmer libretto, additional lyrics by James Fenton and music by Claude Michel Schoenberg, Les Miserables opened in London on October 8, 1985. A few critics found it intriguing and perhaps even important, but most pronounced it a disaster. A lurid Victorian melodrama concluded a critic in the Sunday Telegraph. A witless and synthetic entertainment wrote another in The Observer. The Daily Mail, where Mr. Kretzmer then worked, called it less glums. Scholars condemned what they called a corruption of French literature for pop music. But something was up. In the theater, as Hugo's tale of oppression, liberation and redemption unfolded, audiences were moved nightly to sob and scream. The British public has long had less respect for theater critics than its American counterpart, but rarely has there been an occasion when so many nasty reviews counted for so little Benedict Nightingale wrote in the New York Times. Clearly the power of the story or the music or both hit a nerve in the show's first audiences, and word of mouth did the rest. Fan mail poured in. The box office was swamped. A three-month engagement sold out. Reviews improved. The London production ran continuously from 1985 until this March, when the coronavirus pandemic shuttered London's theatres, making it the West End's longest-running musical and the world's second-longest, after the Fantastics which ran off-Broadway for 42 years. A Broadway production of Les Miserables opened in 1987 and ran 16 years, and there were Broadway revivals in 2006 and 2014. A Hollywood film version in 2012 earned more than $440 million. Showered with awards, translated into 22 languages, the musical has been performed by 100 touring companies and seen by 80 million people worldwide. Its estimated earnings are... Don't tell me, don't tell me why I know, no, no, you won't save my life Save my life Baby, keep on, you keep on, you're making the way You and I will never be safe